Kurt, that was a hell of a performance by Justin Fields and the Bears, and literally no team in NFL history has ever lost a game where they were plus three in the turnover margin and held the ball for over 40 minutes. So we are celebrating that we witnessed history yesterday. <laughs> What's your takeaway from that performance by Justin Fields? I, well, I thought they really played to Justin's strengths. Maybe the first time this year when he's been in there where I really felt like the game plan was very similar to last year, but but catered around the things that, that Justin does well. There was a whole bunch of quarterback designed runs or at least, you know, quarterback design run options off of what they were doing. Uh, they got Justin out in space uh, in terms of throwing the football, uh, you know, half rolls, naked bootlegs, things like that for him to be a creator. Um, and then they took their shots downfield. And so, um, you know, I, I don't think it's any surprise that he played really, really well in a game plan like that, um, because I think we've seen that, um, you know, numerous times over the last couple of years that he's done that. I think the question that continues to remain is, A, can you play that way and be successful week in and week out, especially for the long term, you know, with a uh, an athletic quarterback? Can they stay healthy? Can they, you know, continue to take that kind of pounding on their body year in and year out, week in and week out? And so that, that I think remains the question as we were talking last week, trying to figure out is Justin their guy moving forward? If they can play this way and win the way we saw them play yesterday, I believe the answer without a doubt is, is yes, but they haven't been able to win playing that way. So do we still need to see more from the standpoint of, okay, we can't always have that game plan. We've got to be able to drop back and play a little more conventional football and show that we can win that way when needed um, is still a question I think you have to answer uh, when deciding if, if Justin's going to be your guy for the long haul. And that's what they did at the very beginning of the year, Kurt. They tried to get him to play more of that style that you're talking about. And it didn't work out. So, yeah, that's the thing. 18 rushes, 14 of them were either on zone read keepers or on designed runs. He's missed 10 games in two and a half years. If you were a general manager, how much would that scare you when planning for the future? Uh, it, it would scare me a lot. You know, when you're talking about, you know, franchise quarterbacks are going to make $250 million. They're going to be, uh, you know, take up so much of the salary cap. And, I get it, rightfully so. If you have one of those guys, they're difference makers. You, you pay them and you're willing to pay them. But when a guy is, you know, based a lot around that athleticism, that is a concern. I mean, it was a concern in the offseason with Lamar Jackson, who's a guy that we know is a franchise quarterback, guy that's been an MVP, um, you know, but he had a chance to kind of hit the open market or at least explore who else is interested. And, you know, we can, we can talk about what the reasons were that nobody was interested, but I believe part of the factor was, hey, we're going to have to pay this guy $250 million, and he's missed all these games the last couple of years because of injuries, because he is out there, you know, running and, and you know, holding on to the ball and trying to make plays that maybe other guys don't or can't make. Um, and you have to kind of, you know, balance that risk and reward or, uh, you know, figure out, you know, is it worth it? And how long can they play that way? And what if they do get banged up? How much does that change what we can do offensively? Or even, you know, can they even be out on the field because they're putting themselves in harm's way? So I, I just, th that is a tough question to answer because for guys like Justin and guys like Lamar, it is such a different making tool. I mean, we've seen it. Those guys are so good athletically and they can do things that other guys can't do period so you don't ever want to take that out of the game but you want to limit that to the moments when you really need it because the more you expose somebody to those things the more wear and tear on their body the more opportunities to be hurt I, I think it was us that was talking about it a couple weeks ago that you know there's a reason that running backs have a shorter shelf life because they take a pounding and not that a quarterback's ever going to take that pounding, but those things add up and they change the way that you're able to play as you get older. And so teams that want to 
you know, sign a franchise quarterback. They want to have a guy that they know will be that same guy year in and year out for the long haul and, you know, for the, the extent of their contract. We're talking to Kurt Warner, Parkinson Spiegel on the score. I'm imagining that you've never been in this situation, given how good you were <laughs> and the coaches that you had. But um, fourth and one, they don't go for it. They kick a field goal to go from up six to up nine. Uh, they're up nine. They kick a field goal to go from up nine to up 12 after three straight runs, including a run on third and seven. It felt, Kurt, watching every snap of that game and then rewatching this morning, like they got very conservative late and played not to lose instead of playing to win. I'd imagine they always trusted you. What type of message or damage could that do to a quarterback if Justin Fields feels, feels, feels like we do that his coaches didn't trust him late? Well, I, I mean, I think that's one way to read it is, oh, they didn't trust me to throw it in those situations. I think the other way to read it is it's still smart football. Like, you know, I know we're, we live in an age where everybody goes for it on fourth down, right? And everybody goes for the touchdown instead of kicking the field goal and getting three points. Yep. I don't always agree with that. I, I mean, you know, taking points and getting up nine points so you're up two scores, getting up 12 points so you're up two touchdowns. Like, those are smart moves, you know, not necessarily throwing the football and stopping the clock in certain situations or putting the ball in harm's way. I'm with you. I always th thought to myself, if the ball's in my hands, we have a better chance to succeed than if we ever hand it off. That, that was always my mentality. But I also understood that there's more risk in throwing the football than handing it off. And there's times when, you know, you're in control and, and you're doing things or your defense is playing well, that it is the smart thing to do to take the air out of the football and to just play. Um, you know, I don't like it. I wanted to be aggressive for 60 minutes and said, hey, we got this lead this way. Let's, you know, let's make a bigger lead this way. Let's do it the way that we've done it. Um, but, I, you know, it's always easy to second guess. You know, if, if somebody goes down and they go for it on fourth down instead of taking three points, we're going to second guess them that way, right? If they go for it on fourth down and don't get it, and now they're only up six points instead of nine, we're all going to say, why didn't he kick it, right? Why, why didn't he go up two scores at that point? It doesn't really matter. We want nine points instead of, you know. And so I just think it's so easy to second guess, but I don't think that's bad football necessarily to be smart, take points, put it on your defense, and force the other team to have to make plays to beat you instead of handing them something on a silver platter and making it easier for them. Kurt, there's um, a theory espoused by our guy, Olin Krutz, who's our, our Bears analyst here. <laughs> oh, he laughs at the mention of Olin. Oh, good old Olin. I love Olin. <laughs> Olin's my guy. I love Olin. Who doesn't? Right? Um, so, uh, did he ever throw you into a locker, pin you up against the wall, anything like that? He, no, he never did that to me. Okay. So then maybe that's why I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. He hasn't done it to us either, just for the record. Um, <laughs> so he was saying today that at the end of games, when you're trying to win, it's about the players not the plays and he was talking about the third and nine where fields possibly could have gone to dj moore on the crosser and asked dj moore to break a tackle or two and and get the first down there but he saw tyler scott um uh, uncovered or, or or past the corner because the safety was in robber coverage and he came up and then and so fields makes the throw I loved that throw and trusting a rookie in Tyler Scott to make the play. What's the mindset, though, when it's DJ Moore for a crosser or Tyler Scott unproven for a deep ball? You know, the biggest thing for me is, and I tell all the quarterbacks that I work with, is you play the play. Don't play the situation. And, again, I, I know there's certain situations where, of course, you're going to play the situation more, where you're strung out. Instead of throwing it away, you're going to take the sack. You're going to keep the clock going. So there's always situational things. But for the most part, you don't want to go back on a play and say, oh, it's third and five. So I can't read it like I normally read it. And I'm going to just try to get a completion. Like, you don't want to do that. You, you want to play every play. So, like, if I threw an interception or a touchdown, what I wanted to do is clear all of that. And when the play call came into the, the huddle, it was like, okay. How do I play this play? How do I read this play? I'm going to read it like I always read it, and I'm going to attack it like I always attack it. And that, to me, is how you have to play the quarterback position, just like you guys were talking about. Ironically, you just asked me that question, right, when you were telling me 
you know, two minutes ago, well, should the coach have been more aggressive? And now you're saying, well, the quarterback, now the quarterback shouldn't be aggressive mm-hmm. and he should probably just play more conservative. Like you can't have it both ways. To me, you play the way you play. And so if you come back on that particular play and, you know, with two minutes to go in the first half, you're going to take a shot at the post because the read is there and it tells you to take a shot at the post. With two minutes left of the game, take a shot at the post. That's what I would do. I'm going for the juggler. Defense gives me that. I'm taking it. And I'm going to finish this game on the post row as opposed to going, eh, well, maybe I could, but there's two minutes to go. Maybe I should. That to me is how I always coach guys. Play the play. Whatever the play says, however the defense dictates the play because it was called from the sideline, then make that you know, make that play, make that throw. And so if they don't want me to do that, then don't call that play or send it into the huddle and go, okay, calling this play. We're not throwing the post, right? Complete the crosser, complete the out, but don't throw the post. I mean, okay, tell me that and I'll do what you tell me to do. But if you give me a play, I'm going to play that play. And if the defense says throw the post and they just missed the post, I thought the receiver kind of slowed down a touch or they might've hit that and maybe put that thing out of reach. But, um, you know, but, but that to me is, is kind of how you play the game is that, you know, play is called and I'm going to read it like you've taught me to read it all week long or all year long. And I'm going to take the throw that the defense dictates to take.